Today is the uh, last day of the church here. It's the last Sunday of Pentecost. And with our white lemons, you can see it's a feast day. It's a celebration of Christ our King. Let us pray. O most holy God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. This week, a great number of the TV channels, they also celebrated the 50th anniversary of that great program called Sesame Street. It's one where children learn. Children learn about friendship. Children also discuss the problems and challenges of life. And there were adults at Sesame Street that really kind of were like parents to help their kids in Sesame Street learn to live and grow together. When I grew up, Sesame Street was not around. Either was Tupperware. (laughs) Either was cell phones. Either was a lot of things. But like a lot of us, we grew up spending a lot of time outdoors. And when we were indoors, when I was growing up, we played games like Sorry, Yahtzee, Monopoly. There are a number of us who wore Davy Crockett coonskin caps that from a distance looked like we had squirrels on our heads. It was a time when Christmas trees weren't put up until after Thanksgiving. In our neighborhood, we played a lot of outdoor sports, sports games. And one that stood out was a game called King of the Kill. We had a large vacant piece of property at the end of our neighborhood. It had a large dirt mound. It was probably no more than 10 feet high, but it certainly seemed a lot higher than that. We'd run up the mound with the first one up to uh, the top, loudly declaring, I'm king of the hill. And those of us trailing would charge the kingdom, trying to pull the king off the hill. We all wanted to be king of the hill, to take over the kingdom. It was a great game. It was a lot of fun. There was a problem, however, because for a number of us kids, we grew up, but we never stopped playing the game. We became adults, and this game became a way of life. Charging up the hill, being king of the hill, take over the kingdom, Our dirt mounds became success, money, power, control, prestige, popularity, big cars, country clubs. For some of us, our mounds, though, were the kingdoms of our families, our children, our grandchildren. Or perhaps our mounds became the fantasy tale of living happily ever after. Others of us climb the mountains, the mounds of being self-righteous, overly holy, even patriotic. And there are all sorts of kingdoms. Each one of us can probably name those mounds in our lives. 
the mounds for which we have strived to be queen or king of the kill for many of us. Unfortunately, it's resulted in a constant scrambling, scrambling to establish and control our little kingdoms. This is a hard way to live. It's a difficult way. It's an energy draining way to live. Or as one of my friends, who's also a young pup in our church, has mentioned various times, you know, it's like climbing the ladder of success that's leaning against a wall, only to find out it's leaning against the wrong wall. Today, the Feast of Christ the King celebrates, and it does remind us, hopefully, that playing queen or king of the kill doesn't have to be the final reality of our lives. We don't have to spend our lives trying to get to the top of this 10-foot pile of dirt. Christ the King invites us to stop playing the game. Life does not have to be. It was never intended to be an ongoing game of king of the hill. C.S. Lewis puts it this way. There are two kinds of people. Those who say to God, thy will be done. And those to whom God says, all right now, have it your own way. But there is another way. It means walking the walk, taking to heart the words we recite every week, thy will be done. God has given us life. He's given us gifts. And of course, he's given us Jesus, his son and our savior, who offers us not a mound of dirt, but his kingdom, the kingdom of God. He invites us to share in his kingdom. And that happens in the silence, the silence of deep love and affection for God. The reign of Christ doesn't mean we have all the answers, that everything is fixed, that there is no more pain in our lives or grief in our lives. It doesn't mean that every day then becomes a holiday and every meal a banquet. No. Jesus will not fix our lives, does not fix our lives. Instead, he enters into the reality of our ordinary existence. We remember right there in the reality of our everyday lives, in the midst of our pain and our grieving, in the midst of our dying, in the midst of our brokenness and guilt. Christ is there. Christ comes on the cross to be with us. And then Christ says to each of us, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen.